In my last video, I showed how I built the disc sander portion of my combination belt and disc sander. And in this video, I'm going to show how I made the second half, the belt sander. Since my last video, I made some improvements to the motor mount design. Instead of those curved end caps, I've just got these two pieces attached to this flat sheet. And uh, these two clamps are mounted uh, in a countersunk hole so that the motor can sit flat on this bottom sheet. And this overall is a lot simpler to make and also don't have to worry about getting those end plates perfectly matched so that the motor will sit level. I also built in a tensioning system. I got the motor mount close to where it needs to be. I put one screw in the corner here which attaches it to the base and I've got another screw through this piece that I added and that allows me to cinch up the motor mount and I can add or reduce tension on the pulley. I also started on this power switch box which is just made from some scrap half inch plywood and some hardboard for the face plate. I'm going to use a standard light switch for the power switch and I will just glue that inside the housing and then splice into the main power cable on the motor and I'll install that on the front of the sander. To make the drums that the sanding belt is going to spin on, I'm going to try to use this 2 inch pipe and I'll make some end caps using this piece of plywood which I cut out with a hole saw. And I will put that on here and use this as a lathe again to turn these round and get them down to the diameter where they will fit inside of this pipe. And then I can put a bearing in there and use this one as the idler drum on that end. To easily line up these discs on the drill press, I've got a smaller drill bit that I line up with the center hole, and then I take that bit out and replace it with the actual one that I want to drill. That way I know I'm drilling right in the center of that disc. And first what I'm going to do is just barely kiss the surface with this Forstner bit, and this is the Forstner bit for the bearing that I'll be using. And I did this shallow cut so that when I come back later, I'll know where to drill the hole out for the bearing. Because first what I want to do is drill out the center shaft portion of it. And by doing it this way, I know I have concentric circles and everything will line up when I go to put it together. next thing to build is the fork that goes around the spindle and I'll use these three pieces. This is going to house some of the adjustment mechanism to adjust the tracking of the belt. So there's going to be a slot and a hole in here to uh, receive a bolt that will go through the shaft. Uh, so I'll cut out these pieces next. Thank you. 
I've got the holes tapped in the shaft, but before I assemble everything together on here, I need to fasten this piece of plywood on the back end here, and that serves as the sliding action for the tension adjustment. I originally designed this idler system to slide in and out of the main housing for that quick change uh, ability that you see on most conventional belt standards that you can purchase. But at the end of the video, you'll notice that I didn't actually implement this. I left that feature out because there's enough adjustment range in the tracking that I don't really need to have that extra sliding mechanism and I just left it out for simplicity since I don't really foresee myself having to change the belt very often. This is a nylon lock nut, so I need to hold it in place while I screw the screw down on it. So to keep it from spinning, I'm just going to jam two screwdrivers in there and wedge it in place so it doesn't spin while I tighten it. So you can probably see how this is going to work now since it's threaded through the shaft and just spins freely in the wood parts. I can crank on the screw up and down and that will adjust the height of the axle relative to the other side and that way I can adjust the tracking on the belt. So this side came out really nice but this side definitely got drilled crooked so I'm gonna have to widen that slot a little bit so that I can get the nut in there so that it will spin. All right, that was a bit of a hack job, but I think it'll work. Oh look, now I have room for a washer. Totally planned that. To give the idler drum a bit of a crown shape to help with tracking, I'm just adding a few wraps of aluminum tape around the center of the drum. The driving drum is built just like the idler, but this time I'm using two end caps on each side just to give a little more surface area for biting onto the drive shaft. Since this is the drive axle, they don't get bearings, they're just a shaft hole. And I'm also fastening them with a screw to make sure that the end caps don't spin when they're being driven. To give the driving drum some grip, I'm adding inner tube over the two inch pipe and I had a hard time getting that inner tube just to stretch over the pipe so I had some help with a pair of pliers to kind of pre-stretch it out and then rolled it over the drum and was able to get it on that way.
the first startup ran pretty well. Uh, once I dialed in the tracking, it was running pretty smooth. Before I wanted to test it out, I moved on to boxing in the end where I was going to put on the dust collection. For the platen underneath of the belt, I'm going to use this thin gauge piece of sheet metal and I'm going to back that with a eighth inch hardboard. When I go to fasten down the sheet metal, I want the screws to be flush with the surface, but since this is such a thin piece of sheet metal, I can't do a countersink in the sheet metal. So instead, I've got a through hole in the sheet metal and I've countersunk underneath in the hardboard. That way when I go to tighten this down, the head of the screw will pull the metal down into the countersink and I'll be able to make this head flush with the surface. Before I installed it, I also bent over the leading edge on the sheet metal so that it was a nice smooth transition for the belt. I've got the sander in a running order so I can finally use it, which is awesome. There's a couple other things I want to do before I call this project done, and that is plumb in the dust collection to the shop vac, which is behind me. And I also want to put on either a paint or some kind of a clear coat to protect it, and probably a few other minor tweaks, but I think I'll save those finishing touches for another video.